Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Maker. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad, walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it. We're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We'll pop up first in line. But y'all always see us on the street and be like, man, keep up the good work. I love the content. I love your platform. How can we support a brand? This is how you can support a brand is go on to each and every YouTube video, including this one right here in the description section. There's a link that says join our membership. Become a member today. That's how you can support our brand. Because you'll get so exclusive, and I mean exclusive, exclusive content that people have been looking for for a long time. You'll get all of that. You'll get free merch. You'll get so much just by becoming a member today. Thank you in advance, and thank you for all the love and support. Hey, man, we got a guy in here today, y'all. Very, very special guest by way of New Orleans, man. Y'all know how I rock for New Orleans and, and Louisiana to Texas, man. Cali O'Bub is in the building. What's up, baby? That. What's up? What's up? What's up? Man, man what's I, got, up? I can't call it, man. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I got that call that you was in town. Uh, shout out to my boy, boy Var. You know, me and Cali O'Bub, we... That. Uh, and shout out, you know, me and him last time we was at, uh, where we was at? We was over there with Currency. Mm -hmm. Over there at Jet Life, Jet Life. man. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them yeah. boys down there, man. Welcome to Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Believe that. <laughs> <All the> bosses. <laughs> Say, yeah, man. man. So, man, let's get into it, Miss Lady. Let's go, Miss Jamaica. Okay, so, of course, you're from New Orleans. What part of New Orleans? I'm from Uptown New Orleans, Calio Project. Home of Master PC Murder. You know what I'm saying? A few more other people. You know I see saying? the three. Oh, that's where I'm from, the three. The heart of the three. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's hard, man. The heart of the three, uptown. So what was it like growing up in the Calio Projects? Growing up in the Calio Project was like, it was like, it wasn't it wasn't all good. I'm going to keep it real. It wasn't all good. Like, that was a place where all the gangsters was from. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, it made you grow up tough. You know what I'm saying? You had to be tough. You feel me? Uh, it was one of them hoods, like, if they see it ain't in you, it's over with for you. You ain't gonna even make it. Really? Yeah. So everybody's tough in that neighborhood. Just about. Just Was Master P tough down there? I ain't really. Yeah, he older him. than you. See. Yeah. See, he don't know, but he can only hear stories. Yeah, it was right. tough when he left. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying I know for sure. C too. You know what I'm saying I talk to C myself a lot. You talk to C still to this yeah, day? Yeah, to this day. But what, what? Okay, but do you remember him from being in the projects? I was younger, man, to be honest. So you just, you heard stories? Yeah, I heard a lot of stories. How did you end up linking with, up with him, being that he's locked up in prison? Um, just me holding it down for my hood, younger generation, you know what I'm saying? You know, real gonna recognize real, and I'm authentic, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they mess with me, man, you know what I'm saying? I don't try to be nothing more, nothing less, you know what I'm saying? What did, what, what did, how did, when the first time you spoke with uh, C. Murder, what was that conversation like? Man, he just was proud just to know somebody from the hood holding it down, you know what I'm saying? And somebody that's authentic, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't just portraying no image or none of that, you know what I'm saying? So he just tapped in with me, you know what I'm saying? And he was giving me utmost respect and, you know, motivating me, telling me to keep going, holding it down. And me, him, and Boosie wound up doing a uh, project together, Penitentiary Chances. Wow, that's hard, that's yeah. hard. So yeah, and I was talking to Bob about that because I seen Boosie and, and you on that song together. Like I thought that was dope, you know, uh, being that uh, Boosie, he one of them ones when it come down to, you know, Louisiana right. and and for show, you know, see murder, it goes without saying. They actually, I think they linked when they was locked up, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So were you raised with your mom and dad in the same household? No. Um, my dad was doing like, my dad went in, when I was like eight years old, did like 20 years, you know what I'm saying? So I really just had my mom, really. But before that, he was living with you or he was still on his own? Nah, my dad running the street. Running the street? Yeah. So was he, at, up till eight, was he even always running the street? Was he still a part of your life? Did he ever come he get was, you and? Oh yeah, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna downplay him, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to my pops, you know what I'm saying? But uh, he was, he was, He'll, he'll, he'll go in and out, you know what I'm saying? But when he was in here, he did what he had to do, you know what I'm saying? He wound up getting addicted to drugs and stuff, you mm. know what I'm saying? Tell me about a fond memory that you have of him. Just 
riding in his station wagon with him. You know what I'm saying? My dad was always the type to be like, you know what I'm saying? He going to do whatever it takes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know if he just was preparing me or whatever for when he ain't around, but a lot of stuff he always treated me like I was his partner or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was grooming me. I guess he knew where we was at and, you know what I'm saying, the chances. Yeah, because I always tell people, you know, especially for little boys, men are very, it's very essential to have a male role model, whether it's your father or it's just some, maybe your father's not around, but there's somebody influential in your life to help you grow as a man. Right, right. And, you know, also, you know, I, had a, I have a big family in the project, so, you know, I had a lot of uncles and big cousins and stuff like that. That helped guided you? yeah. So you and Bar, Bar y'all run, y'all run, run around together. Yeah, we we from two different sides of the hood. You remember when Bar brought uh, Cameron down there? Yeah. How was that experience seeing him bring him to the hood like yeah, that? That was that was that was major. I ain't gonna lie, that was major. Seeing Cameron in the project, you know what I'm saying? Just thinking, that's Cameron from Dipset. Dip set. He was hot at you know the time, saying? right? Well, he was a little hot, you know what I'm saying? Hot. But <laughs> just to know, you know, Count Ron right here. I remember seeing him on TV. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Then being signed to Rockefeller and all that, you know what I'm saying? He right here with us. That was different. Wow. Did it give you, like, inspiration to know that you could pull it off at that oh, time? Most definitely. That was, it gave me a lot of inspiration. When I get around a lot of dudes, you know what I'm saying? And just see what he was at. And I'm right here with him. They giving me their stories, their stories just like mine, just from different cities. Yeah, that's you know whole, that's, that's definitely dope. Var, like I said, to see him, you know, just intermingling at that time was dope. A dope, you yeah, know, Var period. hustler. Yeah, real hustler. Most of respect to that, you know what I'm saying? One thing about him, real hustler. Yeah, yeah. Um, where you get a name Bub from? I know where Calio came from, but where Bub came from? Well, Bub come from, you know, when I was small, I was a little chubby, so. My T named me like Bubble, like oh, okay. Chubby, Chubby little dude, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's where the name Bub come from. Shoot, you ain't Chubby no more, so nah. you might have to change that. <laughs> I grew out of you hear me? Yeah, I wanna, I wanna just uh, talk about uh, Soldier Slim for a minute, which you got him on your shirt today. Like, Rest um, peace, Slim. Re you, I, I know you and him had some ties and right. everything. Just give me the insight of how he was as a person and just, uh, kind of how you guys came to be. Uh, well, Slim, you know his character, his energy. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he, he real. He's down to earth. You know what I'm saying? If you know him, he's one of the goodest people, man. Yeah, get his shirt off his back for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? People only see the outside part of him. You know what I'm saying? So the Slim, the the gutter part. You know what I'm saying? I got the street life part. But when you get around Slim, you're a different person. You know what I'm saying? Spirit up. He uplifting everybody around him. He motivating you. You know what I'm saying? Slim from a whole nother project from me. You know what I'm saying? But Slim just took liking to my little circle. You know what I'm saying? And we just been rolling with him. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about a story, um, something that he did. Or how oh, he touched. Oh, man, it's so many stories. Let me <laughs> find one. You hear me? I remember one day we was in a, uh, he called me on the phone, you know what I'm saying? Told me to come and scoop me up. I get in the car with him, you know what I'm saying? We just riding in his lack truck, you know what I'm saying? He just telling me all the old stories, rolling up the weed, you know what I'm saying? He just like, man, let's just go ride through all the hoods and stuff, you know what I'm saying? That was like, he just wanted to get that feel again, you know what I'm saying? And at the time, I was out there, so you know, he like, man, let's go here, let's go here. We just chopping it up, and he telling me a lot of stuff I ain't knew about him, man. You know what I'm saying? For this, like, where he come from and a lot of things that happened. He took me to his hood, let me meet a few people. You know what I'm saying? Slim just different, man. I ain't going to lie. He just different, bro. Wow. I want to also just go to the day that when, you, when, when Slim was gunned down in front of his house. Like, I want you to talk to me about just how you heard about it and just how that day went for you. I got the call. I got the call. I'm sitting in my mom's front room. You know what I'm saying? Just chilling. My mom was cooking. i never forget. And uh, I got the call. Slim got hit. You know what I'm saying? He was supposed to be going to do a show. I was waiting on to get the call so we can leave. 
know what I'm saying? And when I got the call, I'm thinking that's the call to say, come on. The whole while they were calling saying Slim just got killed. I run out the door. I ain't got no shirt on, nothing. I think I had on slippers. I pull up down there because I still wasn't believing it. I see the whole streets blocked off and all that. You know what I'm saying? That one I knew was real. So were you able to get up close enough to see or they kept you back far nah, enough? Nah, they had them covered up. You know what I'm saying? They had the little thing around them in front of the door. Like, that was one of the most... That day still like it just happened yesterday every time I think about it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never thought Slim was going to get killed. Wow. You hear me? So when you... now and I, and I just asked this question earlier going back by there after all was said and done, how many times did your memory set back on that day? Man, it's almost like every day because I, you know, at the end of the day, I know if Slim was here, I'd probably be way somewhere else right now. You know what I'm saying? So that's another thing. It just make you think about if he was still here, where we'll be at. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So every day that's affecting me because now I'm grinding on my own. You know what I'm saying? I know if Slim was here, it'd have been more more different. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So were you? Did you end up in a signing or doing anything to officially be cutthroat, or were you Calio still? I was still Calio slash cutthroat. You know okay. what I'm saying? By heart. You know what I'm saying? By by ties. You feel me? Like I wasn't even rapping when I was running with Slim. Okay, you was just you was just hanging with him just yeah. because he was your people. Yeah, he just liked it. You know, our style, we were just some young dudes from the Cali, you know what I'm saying? You know, we was we was we was them at the time. So, you know, an older head like Slim seeing us, I guess we reminded him of him and his partners. He just gravitated to us. A lot of people ain't expect that. Did you think about his music during that time? Like did you even think of fathom his music when you was running with him? You you was listening to his music or knowing what songs he was coming out with or oh, dealing yeah. with? Most definitely. What was the one that stuck out to you the most, the one that you kind of like, damn, even to this day you'll listen to it and think back? The uh, Hustler. I'm a hustler. What stuck out about that one for you? Because he was just like me at the end of the day. I'm a hustler. So, you know, and... Just the songs and the lyrics he was spitting in that song, like he let you know his ambition. You feel me? I'm a hustler. Without without no label, without nobody, I'ma still get it. You feel me? It was around the time he had left P. You feel me? No limit. And that that song that was just motivation. Everybody was bumping that. The hustle was going in. I'm a hustler, man. You know they know it. Yeah, 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 they yeah, yeah. But yeah, Slim, man, that song now that, that was the one. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, before you came, I call, I call my boy. I say, little soldier, man, you know this guy, but he said, yeah, yeah, that's my dad, people. Yeah, yeah, that was. So man, you know, and that's from hard. New Orleans. I ain't no, ain't no thing. If a person don't know me, he ain't from the, uh, he ain't in the streets. Yeah, yeah, you feel me? Yeah, but I had to call just because I wanted to hear what he had to say. Because I seen when I looked at your page, you had uh, Soldier Slim as one, you know, like your first yeah. picture. Yeah. So, I, I done ran with a lot of them, man. Gates, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Currency. So you and Gates, they got music together? Yeah. Well, what what song do you have together? Kevin Gates, man. He, he gave me a verse, you know what I'm saying? This is when I first started rapping, you know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah. Uh, he gave me a verse, you know what I'm saying? He sent it to you? No. We was together. So let's talk about that. Like, where, because, you know, you have to look at these times or if somebody sent it or if they really got in the studio and did it together. Right. Like, you guys were in New Orleans or were y'all in Baton Rouge or where y'all was at? We was in Baton Rouge. And what? I was with them just chilling in the studio, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that's uh, another thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm from New Orleans. My name, a lot of people respect me and gravitate to me, you know what I'm saying? So. I went to hanging with them, you know what I'm saying? One day we were just in the studio, chilling. He like, uh, what you got open? So I'm like, damn, I'm new to it, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really had nothing open, so I just grabbed the first thing, and man, he went lock, put the verse on there, gave it to me, you know what I'm saying? Wow, no, and, and, and basically. And this one, he, when he was in his prime. So he was really what was this is a uh, uh, two phones or whatever what, what yeah, I, during yeah, that pop yeah, I got two phones yeah. to, that 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 Kevin got right I was like banging with him through that whole era really really and yeah. and how was he at just moving during that time versus how he is now when you see him around that time it was just like he was just more uh, more ambitions at that time and you know 
he was more locked in with the streets then. You know what I'm saying? You know, you go through stuff and you, you know, you kind of change over sometimes when you see how everything gone and shit. You know what I'm saying? Now he's just more on the business tip. Back then, he was more locked in with the streets then. Wow. People don't look at it and think about it, but during the time you talking about him evolving. You know, what What I, I look at is Kevin Gates, you know, like what I was about to say is one of the one of the coldest lyricists out there right now when you look at him and how he move and how they respect him. Um, a lot of times you was talking about his evolution and I'm looking at him from a standpoint of, okay, we see the evolving of him, but the same thing go with Slim who, who died at 26. If he had the opportunity to evolve, right. he would have evolved and became, you know, pressure in, in an evolutionary way to where he could have helped even more people and right. touched even more lives, even in, on, a, on a more mature level. Right. And a lot of times people don't think about that. Tupac the same way at 25, he right. had, gets killed, you know. Biggie as well, these guys never got a chance to evolve right. and be the guys that they were going to be, be the fathers right. that they was going to be, be the leaders that they was going to be, even though they were leading in a time when one would think they should have been led. Right. You see what right, I'm saying? Right. Which right. made them different, really, to be honest with you. Slim was making that around that time that happened. That's why I heard it so bad because he was evolving around that time. You know what I'm saying? And he was making that transition. You know what I'm saying? Slim wasn't crashed out like people would think he'd be. You know what I'm saying? He was smart. He was smart. Yeah. Wow. Man, so I know you guys up here and y'all was out there with BG last night. Like, how it feel to see Shout BG? How 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 it see the, how how does it feel to see him back doing his thing on that stage like that? Man, it, just to see dude back after doing that time and keeping his mouth closed and you know back, I respect to the highest. You know what I'm saying? Like. He deserved that, you know what I'm saying? To be back doing that, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it give me the chills saying it. You feel me? Yeah. Because he really could have still been in jail. You know what I'm wow. saying? Wow. I I see him. He come out fresh, uh, looking like, you know, he back doing his thing. Uh, first thing you see pop out is him and Turk and the hot boys having their issues, you know, far as now they saying they're going to get back together. But just to see them battling like they battling, is this good for hip hop? Is this really a thing where two brothers is just pretty much uh, uh, blowing off some steam? Or, you know, what is this that we're dealing with? Is this hip hop? I feel like they just getting some stuff off their chest. You know, sometimes, you know, that's just how it be, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't going to agree with everything all the time, you know what I'm saying? And I just feel like they gonna get it right, you feel me? People go through stuff sometimes, you know what I'm saying? That's why I just advise nobody, just don't get in it, you know what I'm saying? Them dudes grew up from kids together, really, under cash money, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, if, if, you, if you know how, how things go, brothers crash, you know, get into it sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But I think they're going to be back. Wow. And I know a lot of times, and, and you know, I'm, I'm really, and everybody know how I am on this show when it comes to Pimp C or Birdman or J Prince or Master P, the patriarchs to me, to be honest with you, when you look at the way that the game unfolded. Right. You had to have Slim and these guys in these places. A lot of times to me, I feel like they they went through trial and they were trying to figure it out as well. You know what right. I mean? But a lot of times when people look down on the South, they'll start being judgmental and saying, oh, man, they could have did this, they should have did that. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, what do you say when you see uh, uh, the way that Birdman is towards the whole situation and the whole uh, Hot Boys movement? I mean... I can't really see. Like, what you mean, like? Well, it's the way that he is as far as, you know, the leader, and he's the one that, for him and Slim, kind of established this whole situation. How do you feel this whole thing is? You you know, I know already with the cameras on, there's certain things, you know what I'm saying, we privy to saying, but is this the way that this thing, you would see it unfolding? Or would you think that it could have been done in a different way? I think it could have been done different, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? But... You on boss talk? Tough questions come on boss on. talk. You know I don't know what's going on on the, on the other side. You know what I'm saying? So I can't really speak on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, 
we can only pass our opinions on from, from the outside, outside looking, looking in. in. You feel me? I can't really. I can't really say too much. You feel me? When you think about just the whole game of them coming up, man, the education that they had to do what they done, ain't nobody never did the things that they've done. Right. When you look at even Peace, uh, the things that he's been able to accomplish. Right. Same as Jay-Z, the same right. the, the things that they accomplished without having a, a, a high school diploma at times. Right. You know what I mean? This is a hell of a, a – to go from – not having anything to selling billions of records right. is a whole nother level of who a human being can be. You got white boys that's got education that can't even figure it out. Facts. So that's the part where I start to look at how are we scaling and how are we dealing with these leaders and patriarchs when it comes to the black community. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> if that ain't motivation, I don't know. I don't know. That keep me going right now today. Yeah. Just to know what these dudes did, man. They was from the same concrete as me. You know what I'm saying? And, and did what they did. Man, nobody can't tell me nothing. <laughs> nobody can't tell me nothing. Because so, that's what I was saying. Like, I wouldn't really definitely, I'm a fan, so I would never come down hard on them because everybody else already does. You right. know what I mean? But to look at what they accomplished and, and what they had to work with is something totally different. Well, as far as people coming down hard on him, how you gonna come down hard on him? You know what I'm saying? He created opportunities. You feel me? He ain't have to do that. You know, if it, think about anybody outside of the circle of the hot boys, would give, what would they give to be a part of that situation? To be one who so-called went through so much, but millionaires now. Right. Come on, my dude. Like, on. <laughs> who wouldn't yeah. take the damn chance? Come who wouldn't on, do it? Who wouldn't? Right now today, people still would after all that being said. They just talking. Right. You feel <laughs> me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a little potter told me, man, the bird man put up, man. He don't, I would never even get in that, uh, what was the car? Boo got it with him. I'm man, like, nigga, that man, please, man, nigga, man. that nigga would have broke the dough trying to get it in there. What you gonna do? You gonna <laughs> still be sitting right there on that block? Oh, the block, that's man, what I'm saying. Shit, man, stuff. You ain't no hustler then. Cause I know one thing. Put me in and well, I'm gonna make something happen out of it. You hear me? Already. Um, just like like I said, man, when I when I thought to do this interview, it's like, okay, you from New Orleans. Anytime, that's easy for me. Cause I already love the 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 I energy. ain't just from New Orleans, I'm from the heart of the streets. No, but still, you from that? You from a place where a lot of music and a lot of history came out of, right. and, and you out of a place. I'm gonna let me bring this up. I, I, since you say you're the heart of the streets, uh, uh, Lil Wayne, he didn't get. He's not gonna get to perform for the Super Bowl. I doubt it. No, he I, he might. He might not. Do you think he should have been given that opportunity? I mean. I mean, I ain't gonna be biased about it, you know what I'm saying? And I just felt like the people picked it who they wanted for whatever reason, you know what I'm saying? It's politics behind all this. You feel me? I agree. I agree. But the one thing I do say is I don't look at it from a Lil Wayne perspective. I look at it as from a cash money, no limit perspective. Right. Like, you come to Louisiana, when you went to Inglewood two years ago, you can show love to Dre and all these other people in the in their city and them being from there. Right. Jay was like, Jay did this is great. Ha ah, ha ha. But now get to New Orleans and this ain't the first time coming down there and it's still you're not showing no love to the the, the movement of the hip hop in that state. Right. In that city that you come into. Well, you know, there's a lot of grudges and I, I'm just, I, I get that, but I'm just saying. Let's be real. Is it? Is it, it's, it's inconsistency? It's not being consistently doing things from a perspective to where you did in other areas, right? Why is that? I mean, I know I'm a I'm a I, I'm very very. Listen, I know I really win the South, bro. I'm not for the set and play and act like it's not a bias when it comes to under that Mason Dixon line, bro. Right. I know better. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So. I hear everybody and they talking about a little Wayne. They should have did no the whole thing. When you come down here, give us the same respect you give everybody respect. else. Right, right. I, I feel what you're saying. <laughs> I feel what you're saying. We st the definitely the record sales are there. Right. The hits are there. Facts. Everything that you did everywhere else, we did it here and more. More. More definitely. 
<laughs> Most definitely. That's all I'm saying. You probably a chip on the shoulder or something, man. You know, sometimes when people, you know what I'm saying, the comparison things and all that, everybody different. Even though he Jay-Z, man, you know, when he hearing all this competitive stuff, you know what I'm saying, you don't know what he holding on the inside. I know one thing. You if you're going to tarnish my legacy and I can control it, I don't know what I might do. See what I'm saying? <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, you feel me? <laughs> and I just said it was chess, not checkers. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, okay. Think about it. It's, okay. it's all. It's a game. Life ain't nothing but a game to certain people who got who hold the key to to, to different man, moves Jay, in the game. Jay Z human, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I I just know down here it's a little bit different. I think the I think the scales just like that. It's not balanced. You know what right. I mean? It's not. It's not balanced. It's not. not. But at the end of the day, like I said, it doesn't hurt our money. It doesn't hurt nothing. We still get our money. We still hustle harder. We got bigger houses. We got bigger cars. Right. We still got everything we need. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Our podcasts look better. Cameras everywhere. Believe that. Believe that. I walked in and I yeah. It's together. All the way together. Hard, ain't it, man? For so, sure, for so, sure. So, so, so who's, who's your top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Oh man, damn! You talking about one on right now, man? Any genre? Any genre? Shit, hang on. You gotta go. I go with I go with Jay first. Okay. You know what I'm saying I go with uh, like up to now or just back then. All over the place in the world, Craig. Yeah, in the world, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Give me a. I'm mostly on the heartfelt side, man. You gotta give me like Jay. You gotta give me like a. Um, you gotta give me like a Mozzie. You gotta give me Gotti. Okay. Only three. Only three. You know what I'm That's it. That's it. That's it. That's your three. Yeah. Wow, show, show. man. Like I said, let's let's talk about it, man. The new. Talk to me about the new music. Let's go. Oh man, I'm Let's I've been get into locked it. in. You know what I'm what? saying? Hey, you got new sounds now. Yeah, I got new sounds. One second. High Street. What is that? Man, it just it's is about it's it's my life, man. You know what I'm saying? I just get a, a rush off giving people my story, man. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like I'm different. Everybody taking that one route. I'm I'm staying, I'm sticking to the strip right now, man. I just feel like the younger need to be motivated, you know what I'm saying? They need they need somebody to sit them down that big bro, you feel me? Then to just send them out there talking about go crash, go spin a band, go do this. No, I'm right, you're telling you, look, you could do this or do this, you feel me? I've been through this, I wouldn't do this, you feel me? I'm gonna give you some advice. Matter of fact, I got advice coming next too. Wow. Yeah. Wow, you didn't work with so many different people. I, we we just scratching the surface from currency, everybody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? A lot of people be puzzled about all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For the say, I done been around all these people, and they're like, man, I thought you was in the door. I thought you had a deal. No, I ain't had nothing. You feel yeah. me? That just all off my face. You know what I'm saying? That go to show you ain't none of this whipped up or water whip. You feel That's me? That's real. How important is uh, Rude Jew to the city, man? Rude Jew, he. You know what I'm saying? He a good dude. He a good dude. He cool. You know what I'm saying? When it come down to the comedy and all the stuff yeah, that they do. Yeah, man, I he seen one him the ones. perform and he's, he's, he's he, nice with it, bro. That dude take that to heart, man. No, he you do this. No, I don't think nobody else do it like that I, that I seen. Man, when you when you can look in the person's face when they doing it, you just see this certain, like, that dude do that, like, he take that to heart when they doing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can tell he passionate about it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That's hard. Shout you know? out to Rude Jew, for real. Yeah, like, like. And I ain't gonna just stamp no anything, so I don't want y'all to think I'm just sitting here just. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> ask you, and you tell me what you think about yeah. certain situations. I'm gonna ask about it, man. Like, like I did about the Lil Wayne, or like I did D One, man. D One got his name mentioned right. by uh, 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 by Kendrick Lamar on that track, the latest one that just came out. That's he right. pretty much say he, you know, he he good with. He, you know, he feel like that they picked the right choice. I mean, what do you think when it comes down to uh, D1 in the city? I, I be trying to get into him, you know what I'm saying? I don't got nothing against him, but just some stuff just rubbed me wrong. Like what? Like some stuff like... D1 been on Boss Talk? What the heck did it... What, what rubbed you wrong about? Somebody just did a diss track against him. Oh, I, yeah. One of those other bloggers, uh, one mm -hmm. of the... Yeah, I seen that. It said FD D1. 
I just feel like, you know, I understand he trying to make a change or whatever, but it's just the way he's going about it. You feel me? If you you doing the things you saying they shouldn't be doing. You know what I'm saying? You getting on social media slandering them. You feel me? If, if you if you believe in what you believe in or your religion, I think you should go about it another way. You feel me? That's all I'm saying. Like, he said a lot of real stuff, don't get me wrong, but the way you going about it, you feel me? This is how these dudes make their livings, you feel me? This is how they feed their family. Yeah, it might not be right, but nobody perfect, you feel me? So if, if Wayne, you feel like Wayne uh, leading the culture by, ooh, I think you should have that talk with Wayne, you feel me? Or just keep doing what you doing. You ain't got to down talk Wayne. It ain't like he's doing something new, though. He came in the game and he talked. Uh, that first song about J-50 and Wayne, he didn't just start doing this. This is something he's been doing heard, for a I long, long time. Wayne, I heard you say Wayne was the reason why you have dreads and all that. So you got to believe in Wayne that one time. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, but I think he's he's growing as well. I think he's evolving. I think everybody's evolving, to be honest with you. But I think he's not the same D1 that he was when he first started. You know what I Most mean? Definitely not. I don't think that. And I think he's growing, but I think it's going to make him, because of him being so in knitted into the craft of doing music, it's going to make him speak on music more. It's going to make him challenge different artists to come out. That's right. just what it's going to do because that's what he's into. That's what he into. You know what I mean? Just like if you, like I said earlier, if he'd come for the podcast, so he come to my world then I'm going to be like man what are you talking about because right. this is my world you could see two podcasters doing that so at the end of the day when you look at him yeah he going to see you he going to see Bub Calliope Bub he going to be like man what? Are, why is he talking about this he ain't in the projects like that no more he don't even be doing that no more but he keeps speaking on that in his music he's not helping the kids no more he's hurting the kids nah that's why evolving like me for my music when I'm speaking, I'm speaking from the heart. I ain't sending you to crash out. I'm trying to motivate you. I'm trying to sit you down and give you this story. I want you to, if you ain't experienced this, I, I experienced this. So I want you to hear how this can go or how this gonna go if you do this. You feel me? So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Some things you can't just tell them, man, get out the streets. And they gonna know. You gotta know how to deal with certain situations. I'm gonna bring you in my world. Maybe if I could get your attention and talk to you, you might see my point of view. I always bring up uh, this one guy because y'all all be jamming, but Young Greatness had a hell of a run down there when he yeah, was. Yeah, man, Young Greatness, we did music man, together too. He did? He yeah. was great. I, he had a hell of a run. Like, you and him, you you did music with him. How did you, what did you think about him when he was having his run? Well, I was, I was, I was cool with Young Greatness before all that. You know oh really? Saying? Yeah, before I was rapping, him and my cousin, uh, chaotic, chaotic kid, he the he was signed to Cutthroat Committed. You know what I'm saying? They was a group at one time. You know what I'm saying? So I've been knowing Teddy way before all that. Wow. So how did you? What did you think when when you seen what happened with him? Do you feel like? I, and I gotta ask you this: like with him coming home and getting uh, killed like he did. Do you feel like an artist should move away once they start to find their success? I, I think so, but a lot of times it be it be it be issue financial issues too. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying I don't think all the time you have to move away. It's just how you move. Okay. Like the move he was making wasn't a good move that time of night. Going do that, nobody around watching you. I thought it was at a Waffle House or something. Yeah. Was it early in the morning? I thought it was it was yeah, night. Late night. Okay, I mean, I, I was thinking it was early in the morning. Yeah, it was late night, after club hours. After club hours. Yeah. And, you had, and and was he by himself or do you remember? I don't remember, but from the looks of it, it looked the way it looked. It looked yeah. like he was by himself. Right. And that's you're right. Moving like that on the level that he was on is thrown to me because he's I, when we looked at him, his movement, his music, like it was taking off. Oh yeah, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? He was the first, uh, I think, he was the first one to bring the plat to uh, QC. They they first platinum plat. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. That's hard. Moolah. Moolah did it, didn't it? Yeah. Wow. And you, what what was it like when you heard that morning that he had got, gotten uh, gunned down uh, at that Waffle House? What, what did you think? 
when you first heard about it? You you hear about this stuff so much. So yeah, I'm 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 man, it just be like with me, I'm numb to to be honest, you know what I'm saying? I've been through it my whole life, like losing people. You know what I'm saying? I was almost out of here twice, so Wow. You, know what I'm you yeah, got hit? Yeah, I've been hitting my head and everything. Wow. That's something to talk about. But when was the first time? How old were you the first time you got hit? I think I was like 18, 19. It's a normal thing in New Orleans to get mm. shot like, like that. How many times? I've been shot on two separate occasions. I won't say about five, six times. Something on like that. one on one occasion? On, on with, between both. Between both? Damn. Man, the crazy part, you know what I'm saying? But was, in your head, what part of your head? Right here. Oh, okay. You can still see Half of this, my ear is is, is split. They oh, okay. Sew it back together. You know what I'm saying. Was that from the back when they when they shot you, or from the front? They pulled up on. It was from the side. I was in the car. Oh, okay. Pulled up. And you on turned me. your head. Yeah, yeah. Wow, lucky that you turned your head. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, because if they that. didn't, it would have been right. Yeah. So you. But it was stuck in the like right there in. The crazy part, the two that was supposed to hit me in my side stuck in my shirt. The bullets was really in my white t-shirt. Wow. Yeah. How is that possible? I don't know. God. Must have been my grandma. Wow. wow. So so when you get hit uh, the first time, do you do you end up, you the only one in the car get hit? No. It was me and uh, three of my other little partners. Did everybody make it? Yeah, everybody made it that night. So did y'all just go straight to the hospital once that happened? Yeah, we drove ourselves to the hospital, put up on a ramp. The whole way, I'm just thinking of my funeral. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm feeling the blood leaking from up here and shit. I'm just thinking of my funeral. I'm like, damn, I f they finally got me. You feel me? Like the whole way to the hospital. I was just, it was just like a, like a dream or something. Did you know who done it? No. They just pulled up and let go? Yeah. Wow. Did you ever, uh, at that moment, I know you said you was thinking about your funeral, but did you ever feel like, man, I wish I had more time? Because you don't ever know at that point if you're going to make it. But yeah. do you ever start, did you think about, like, man, I wish I had more time to do this, more time to do that? Like, I wish. I well, to be honest, I was already living like that, living on doing time to do this. That's how much I was losing people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To where I was already living like that. What you saying? Okay. So Every day that's like why it's when it happened, it was like, all right, this day happened. You know what I'm saying? Every day you waking up, you don't know when it's your turn. Yeah. So did you have, did you lose consciousness at any point or did you just, was you conscious all the way to the I was on syrup at the time, so that kept me calm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I would calm all the way to the hospital. The only thing scared me I get out, the jump up to see if I could stand up or whatever. Cause blood down here, up here. And one thing that really scared me though, I rushed to the to the door. The doctor grabbed me, but they sit me down. I'm like, what? <laughs> I need y'all to start working on me. They set me down. Wow. And they just let just let you sit there. Yeah. They set me down. I'm thinking they about to throw me straight on the bed and get to work. They set me down for a minute. Why? Why okay. did they tell you why? No. That's weird. But no, it, it ain't weird. He black. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I be hearing this black. insurance thing too. Yeah. They yeah. gotta make sure you covered. Yeah. You ain't you ain't covered. They will let you go. Wow. But they gotta stabilize you though. Think about how many black people they see coming in there shot up when you're a doc at a doctor's office. Right. When you had an emergency room. Mm -hmm. The blacks coming in shot up, the whites not. They have overdoses. But that's different. Another thing I learned, I'm, I'm put the organ on and stuff on your uh, driving license, your ID. They you. They need that. Yeah, they need that. <laughs> you feel me? So, I just thank God that you made it through. How long did you stay in the hospital? Uh, I was blessed both of my time. I was the first just, time? Yeah, I ain't staying that long. I was, uh, they patched me up, got me right. And down there, it happened so much, you know what I'm saying? Shipped me straight back home. 
Wow. Wait, I was what? back to the trenches. And so you you make it back home. What what your tea lady say? What your mama say? Well, you know. She on your head. And I don't be like that. My, one thing about my mom, I respect about her. You know what I'm saying? She uh, she know what it is. You know what I'm saying? And she don't like she don't uphold stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like certain people, mamas and stuff, uh, act like their sons out here, an angel when shit happen. You feel me? <laughs> my mom was the type. She know what what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that's what come with it. Well, let me ask you this. The second time you get shot, where are you at this time? This time, this time, are you sitting in the car again? I was in the car again. What? Yeah. I was in the car. The car just rolled up? I'm sitting in the car. We just pull up from getting some food. I'm sitting in the hood in the car. I see the car slide past us, then smash on the brake. So I'm sitting about to go in reverse. You know what I'm saying? I'm already just, I'll be on perm. You know what I'm saying? I'm militant, you know what I'm saying? The car smash on brakes and try to go in reverse. Now, I ain't must know if this you was nobody strapped? for sure. Yeah, I'm strapped. Okay. I ain't even know if there was somebody for sure that's trying to do something, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't want to just get out hitting or nothing. So what I did was put the car in drive. So I'm telling my partner, just car backing up. You feel me? It could have been somebody uh, passed the address up or something. So, you know, it'd be hard to just get out and get off. Yeah, you know, because, it ain't gonna be some innocent people, mm-hmm. you feel me? So I put the car in drive and just hold on. So I saw the car backing up and I eased up. So when I'm easing up, they started shooting. What did it hit you at this time? Hit me in my leg. In your leg? Yeah, and you, hit me in my ankle, it was stuck in my ankle. So as I, you know what I'm saying, drive myself you to the You the only hospital. one got hit? Yeah. Uh, I get you out say, of, here we go again. Right, it happened so <laughs> much, you know what I'm saying? It, was, I, it burned when it hit you then. Man, not at the time because you, your yeah, adrenaline, adrenaline rush. You feel me? But when I got out the car on top of the interstate to check myself, I fell because I was, it was in my ankle. Damn. You know what I'm saying? It was in the bone. I drove myself to the hospital. Yeah, somebody was with you, of course, right? Yeah. Yeah. One of my partners. This time, did they let you get to the back or they just sit you down? They brought me to the back. <laughs> <laughs> now, he ain't got hit one time. Yeah. They, they brought they him brought to, the, to back. the back. Three times, he's sitting in the front like this. Facts. Facts. That's crazy. Yeah, That's why man. I was trying to get to that point. I want to see what happened when you got back to the hospital. Same hospital? No, this was different. Yeah, you went to a different hospital. Yeah. You like, hell no, nah, I ain't going to be going for that. <laughs> there was a different hospital. <laughs> you hear me? No, man, like, you got to understand, man. man. Lose it. Hey, listen, man, anytime you get hit, you, you best to stay calm and right. try to make it to where you get home to your kids. You got kids? Yeah. So that's important. Like, how important is God in your life, brother? Man, God is real important in my life. Like, real. Like, I pray a lot. You know what I'm saying? My grandma was a reverend, man. I was, she was like my mom. She raised me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Died on my birthday. Wow. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was like she waited, waited till I got there to see her. You know what I'm saying? Man, her was real tight. She was spiritual. You feel me? And I don't know. That was played that a big mom? part of my life. Your mom, mom, or your dad, mom? It's, it's my mom, dad, mom. Mm. Yeah, but she raised us. She raised you? Yeah. Wow, that's dope, man. That's real dope, bro. Like, so how can let me let me ask you this, man? Uh, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Uh, you get me on Instagram. You know what I'm saying FTV Bub. You can get me on Facebook, Calio Bub. You get me on Twitter, Calio Bub. TikTok, Calio Bub. <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm everywhere. That's Calio Bub. Yeah, Calio Bub. Apple Music, uh, Spotify, wherever. Just type it in, man. It's going to come up. Man, thank Callie you so above, much. Callie above, man. man. Don't I, forget it. I think I, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Well, I know definitely. y'all I know y'all down here for the night. Y'all, y'all stay out of trouble, man. Hit the cities, man. Hit right. the city and ha- have some fun. Oh, yeah. That's what we've been on, man. Trying to enjoy this, man. I'm going to go back. Uh, link up with BG and I'm tonight again. Yeah. Tell BG you missed out on good on good cameras and good interviews. You see him up there. I keep telling everybody. I call. I hit menace all these people up and they, they didn't yeah. get him over here. 
it, it, that's on them. This boss talk. And at the end that. of the day, uh, you seen Ice T on the on, on the on the monitor if, when you first come in. Yeah, Everybody yeah. been on boss talk, man. Right, right. So I don't know I don't know what's the hold up. We try and get these niggas in here. Man, yeah. I appreciate you for getting in, here, man. You know what I'm saying? Now I love the I love the boot, man. I'm just like I said, man. I always come down there. I've been down there three, four times and did interviews down in the city. I did at Peaches. I, I came and set up All at right. Sharonis. Uh, I didn't. I didn't set up down there at uh, different studios, different conference rooms. I always come to the city and do interviews. I show love. When right. Birdman had a street named after me and BG, and them was together right there. I gave him a portrait. I was all. I'm always showing love to New Orleans, man. All right. You know what I'm saying? Damn. <laughs> you didn't even know that, did you? No. Boss Talk 101, man. That. It's going down. Yeah. Boss Talk 101, man. Thank you for coming on the show. Much we love, love you, bro. Love you too, man. Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. 